Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and today we've got something a bit different, something I threw together for a two week project. This is the Forge World Demon Prince of Nurgle. And I was looking forward to painting this one for quite some time, it's been sat on the shelf. Uh, thank you Millward for donating this one to the studio for a paint job. And uh, he's quite happy with the result we got in the end, so all worked out quite well. So. Obviously, as always, I had to give this one a clean because it's a Forge World kit, so you want to get rid of that mold release. And you can see a few white dots, but I'm going to go over that again with some more Vallejo Black Primer. After that, I decided it was time to go. We're going to go over it with a Wolf Grey by Game Air, and we're going to do some pre highlights. Although I did end up going a little bit stronger than I should have done with this. Ideally, you want to sort of space that out and uh, make sure. You go at a 45 degree angle. Now I will be using the airbrush for some of this uh, first part of the video. But it can all be done with just a set of paint brushes as well. Or even a rattle can. After that I'm starting mucking about with some new colours that we got in. This is Black Leather by Scale 75. I'm going to start putting this as a general filter over everything. With my uh, PSI on my airbrush turned down very low. And I'm going to start painting it into the shaded areas because uh, the cone of the airbrush where it sprays is going to hit all the light areas anyway. I just want to uh, make sure the depth is a nice dark purpley off colour. So I really do like this uh, dark, you know, this black leather that we've got. Next I'm going to use two more scale 75s and that's going to be Walnut from the Wood Range and Rylan, Rylan Grey. Uh, this is to add a slight greenish grey hue to the underneath as I wanted a combination of purples, greens and yellows to make the demon prints look extremely repulsive. But I wanted colour transitions in random places from the arms, maybe the arms were decayed a bit more where the blades and gun were coming out. After that I start throwing on some Dryad Bark by Games Workshop. One, it's going to cover those uh, white patchy areas that are distracting me. Uh, on all the horns and the other details and secondly I get to see what it looks like against the palette that I've started coming up with as you can see that a uh, grey colour is quite dark and it's gone into some of the recesses as well just to add a little bit more depth and again I'm going back to Rylan Grey and Walnut with a little less of the no sorry with a little more of the grey into it this time Really darkening up, darkening up that uh, that grey. As uh, this particular bit of paint here is going to be a shade that I'm putting in rather than a colour transition. All the other layers are going to go over the top of that. Next, I'm going to use red leather and black leather by Scale 75, and this is going to add some soreness and some colours into the uh, open wound areas. Again, I'm working it around the shades and under the folds of skin. Uh, as uh, he's so fat and bulky, I'm assuming um, his skin will rub a lot in the fat folds. So I'm trying to colour those in with those colours as well. Um, this was pretty much a colour experiment with the new scale 75s, although I uh, do enjoy the project quite a lot. Did enjoy the project quite a lot, I should say. Now I'm going back to the Wolf Grey by Game Air, and that's just to start re-highlighting those top bits so uh, we start to get the contrast again. As you can see we're getting a nice set of colour transitions here and I'm making sure with the wolf grey that we don't lose the highlighted areas too much. For this particular model I wanted the light coming from the gun arm down across his stomach and across his face um, which was quite difficult to do as it looks like his uh, arm that's on the camera left uh, just didn't catch the light right the way I wanted to do it. Maybe I should have changed the angle there. After that I'm going back in with just a very thin layer of black leather by scale 75 just to tone those uh, greys down ever so slightly but still let them show through. Basically just going to blend those in with the uh, previous highlights. After that I'm going to start using Harvester Flesh by Scale 75. This is a um, sort of a yellowy flesh. 
So this was going to be the base for my uh, yellows. So I started putting that over certain areas. The, the bits that I wanted to be more green are the bits that are going to have the harvest of flesh. So that's the top of the arms and around the bottom of the where his hands would be. Um, so most of his back as well. I wanted a colour transition from his uh, arms and his gut. I also wanted his feet to be a slightly different colour. Just to make the model a bit more interesting to look at. Now what's in these two pots is... One of them is Agrax and Athonian Camo Shade, which is mine and his toilet water mix. And the other one is Null Oil, Caraberg Crimson and Drushi Violet. All mixed up, um, just till I got a tone that I liked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply them both onto the model using the airbrush. Now this is the Athonian Camo Shade going over all the areas that I've been toning with the greys and greens. And what I'm going to do once I've done this is very quickly switch to the uh, other colour in the airbrush and let them mix on the model um, as they're not quite dry yet. So I'm going to spray over each other and it should start to add all the colour in that we need. Um, there'll be no brush strokes because I'm using an airbrush. And it will simply add uh, as a filter and then start really adding all those colours and depth in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start blending in the other wash, the Drushi Violet mix. And as you can see, um, the arms already have gone a, a very nasty colour, but we can blend this purple over the top of those yellows and vice versa. So there'll be a completely seamless blend between the two there, giving it a more natural look. Now this is quite a bit, uh, quite a long bit of footage. I just wanted you, wanted you to see this process. Um, as I quite enjoy doing stuff like this. But I do think, in hindsight, this is where I had jumped the gun. I should have waited for a lot more highlights and things to be done before doing this, um, as it did really darken the model down a lot. Now, this is Rust by Model Air. I'm going to start using this to basically paint in all the wounds and start giving a nice uh, reddish warm tone to the underneath. As you can see by the shape of the model, at this point I'm looking at it, I think all it needs after this is for me to go through with a brush and some highlights. But somewhere along the way, I started losing track of what I was doing, mixing all these paints. So now we have Dark Earth by Model Air, Sandstone, and then Rust by Model Air, all mixed together, just to give an off, sort of a, um, a rotting fat sort of a colour as I uh, did google what that would look like online and then started going for that sort of colour. So we're going to start building up what looks like fat from his uh, butt cheek and glazing that up. Um, but it's just going to be a colour transition this. Uh, we want to leave some of that rust in the underneath but we want to start building up those colours so they look like open bits of fat. Next is Game Colour Red Shade and Reclam Flesh Shade mixed together. We're going to start applying this uh, very watered down into any of the rust areas. That's just going to enrich those colours that we've done, as well as enrich the sandstone that was just glazed over them as well. That way we're not going to end up with any brush strokes in them and it's really going to add that depth. Uh, so we're going to need that later on to make the model not look so flat. As the uh, model was getting a little bit messy and I kept rubbing parts off, I decided um, I'd airbrushed over a lot of it, so I just used Vallejo's Black Primer again to start picking out the robes and the guns, just to uh, block those out so they weren't distracting. I could see more of what I was painting at the time, which was mainly the flesh work. And also at this point, I hadn't decided what colour I was going to do the cloak or the guns, so having a blank canvas there uh, against those colours would give me some ideas for later on. Next up it's Sand Yellow on its own by Model Air. Now we're going to keep glazing up the wounds. I end up doing this for several hours as there is a lot of them to do. It's um, very difficult to uh, paint this model the way I wanted as uh, it's quite bulky to hold as well. I was constantly concerned I'd be chipping paint off and uh, there's just so much going on with this model, it's hard to focus on a single spot. Now Warp Fiend Grey by Games Workshop is going to be used to start highlighting the purples. So at this point, 
trying to remember where your light source is coming from, I start glazing and picking out those areas. Obviously, you don't want to do all of his back there, just the top notch that I'm painting there, as he has a big barrel that goes on the back, and that would add shadow as well. I really wanted that stomach to be very well highlighted and uh, very well pronounced. Now I'm using a pur the purple wash mix again, but this time I added a little bit of null oil. And this time what I'm doing is I'm painting it into the recesses. And then I will clean my brush off and take away all the excess from the top as well when I'm done. Uh, just to add a little bit more of the uh, depth as it was quite washed out with the airbrush wash that we did And I do think that was one of my main mistakes not leaving enough uh, pre-shade in there beforehand uh, If I'd left more black in there previously that would have had a lot more depth and shape to it And I wouldn't have to keep going back in with black lining and everything else So next it's Miskatonic Grey by Scale 75 And as you can see I'm starting to work on the uh, flappy bits of flesh on the front and I do like Miskatonic Grey, it's quite a um, pastel-y grey but it works as a muted highlight so the light's hitting it but it's not making the colour any brighter it's just muting it and you will see me use this a lot in the tutorials. Next is Terra Earth by Game Air and I decided to use this for the underneath of the fat so any of the skin that's actually folded over revealing anything else I decided that uh, Terra Earth would be sort of a blondish, nasty, sick brown. So alongside the colours we've added to the fat with the sandstone, I thought that would actually work quite well. And also it would be uh, washed very well uh, to match the rest of it. So it actually looks like his skin's ripped and he's folding over. Next up is Rhinox Hide. As we are going to start working on his toenails, which I wanted to be very, very repulsive, um, really exaggerate the swollenness of those toes. And I thought Rhinox Hide against this uh, sort of green yellowy tone um, would work quite well. It's used a lot in this palette. Um, they're not going to be Rhinox Hide when they're done, I just thought it was a good base so that if there's anything showing in between the skin and the toe, it would look reddish and sore, as well as also being brown to complement the other colours. And here's one that's also new, a Rico by Scale 75, which is a sort of an orangey yellow colour. And that's what we're going to use to start highlighting the toenails. I'm just glazing from the back to the front there at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of cracks in these toenails, so if you follow those, you'll get a much better result as well. Uh, just try and glaze those bits, leave the Rhinox hide in the uh, recesses. And when you put a wash on it, it'll pull all those together and make them look like one solid thing. Now I'm going to add model colour beige brown to the Eureka, and that's going to start really livening up that colour. At this point, they look like very nasty, cheesy toenails, um, which is what you really want for this model. And at this point, I'm doing the... On the lines and cracks across the top, I'm doing about three quarters of a highlight across those and it's really starting to bring out the uh, cracks in the toenails and the shapes. Next I'm going to water down Rhinox Hide and use that as a wash. You can see how thin that is there, it's almost a, uh, a wash consistency acting as a filter. It's just going to add a little bit more of that sore reddish brown into those recesses and also fill in some of those gaps that we've got there that may have had a little bit of paint end up, or pigment end up in there, filling them in a little bit. It's also going to redefine the skin around those toes. And uh, yeah, as you can tell, that's starting to look really nasty. Now I'm, I'm going to go back to the beige and Arico mix. Aroco, I can't remember, I don't know how that's pronounced. Uh, but it's the scale 75 one. And just a little bit more of the brighter beige colour there. And we're going to start picking out the very tips of the toenails and the very serrated edges of the toes. Especially across those cracks because we want to emphasise how broken and nasty these toes are. I do apologise, it's quite hard to keep this one on camera. Um, but you can see the toes there, but as you can imagine, the 
model's so fat he hasn't seen his toes in a long time, so it's very difficult for me to get that angle. Now, adding a small amount of model colour green-grey to that beige mix. Uh, the green-grey is not so much green, it's more of just a light grey colour. And that's, again, used to just highlight the very tips and, crack and the edges of the cracks at the tips of the toenails. Right, on to something completely different now, as I was uh, just testing some colours out for the whole project. This is Dumball Brown by Games Workshop. We're going to just spray that all over the... Well, that's a barrel, I would assume. Um, that's a barrel with some Nurglings in the back of it, having a bath. Uh, which is very characterful for Nurgle, as always. You, know, you can easily paint this with a brush as well, guys. I was just doing this to make my life a little bit easier. Next is Monfang Brown by Games Workshop. And I'm basically going to aim this um, in between the raised sections. That way we get a, a nice highlight there and uh, it dips into the uh, Dumbo Brown just underneath those uh, raised edges, giving the appearance that there's a bit more shadow. You don't have to follow this all the way around. If you remember the back of this barrel connects straight to the back of the demon prince so you can let that fade out there after that it's games workshops xv88 this is just one of the ways i decided to do the rust um got loads of different techniques for rust if you've watched the channel you'll uh, see those i'm doing the same thing again when i'm getting closer with the airbrush and making that area just a little bit smaller each time After that, I decided to uh, tone it together with pretty much a pure Reclam Flesh Shade wash. The reason for this is um, the X388 does take out some of the colour, but it does help the transition. And once you put the Reclam Flesh Shade on pure, it's such a, a reddish orange that it's going to really emphasise that rust effect that we're going for. Don't let it pull too much. It is still a filter, but it is, for a change, pure Reclam Flesh Shade. And we're going to put that all the way around the parts that we've just done. Obviously, I'm going to leave that somewhere drying now, so it's out of the way. And we're going to switch to Tandalus Red by Scale 75. And we're going to use this very watered down, and we're going to start painting into the sores. I'm basically going in and around the inside edge of all the sores. I suppose if I wanted to do an oil wash, I could do this with a reddish oil paint as a pin wash. But I decided to paint this in um, because what you can do is paint it in like that, wash your brush off and you can feather it up and uh, into the fat colours that we've done and it really does blend quite well and looks naturally so. After that I'm going to do the teeth in a uh, Rhinox hide. Now the teeth were really hard to capture on um, camera because I couldn't get my hand around the gun um, and keep it on camera at the same time. But uh, the smile on this guy is absolutely brilliant. It's, uh, I love the face for this, it's a brilliant sculpt. After that, I'm going to add a little bit of Dark Earth by Model Air into the Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop. We're basically just working on those teeth. I wanted them to look really rotten and nasty at the roots. So uh, I'm also painting some of that around the inside of the mouth as well. As I wanted to darken the mouth up and it's going to be quite gory later on. Next up, Talon Sand by Games Workshop. As I'm having to use lots of different colours of uh, yellow and different tones, uh, they all look very similar but are being used in a different way. And Talon Sand was a good one, as I'm going to use some bone and some other stuff. So I wanted a more yellowy, nasty colour and I didn't want it the same as the toenails that we've done. So be really careful painting uh, these teeth, you don't want to get that paint anywhere else. And take your time glazing those on. Also take your time picking out what's teeth and what is gums, uh, as it can be quite difficult to tell as the mouth's quite compact. Now I'm going to use Game Air Dead Flesh, and as you can see those teeth are really coming on now. Uh, very nasty yellowy, sort of a hint of green to them as well, uh, with the dead flesh. We're going to start highlighting 
just the bits that he would uh, grind his, where he'd grind his teeth um, and maybe chip some of the decay off possibly. I'm going to use those as a highlight there, especially on that front tooth that points forward as the light would hit that the most. Now I'm going back to using black leather 50-50 with Dandil Violet, they're both scale 75. And that's what I'm going to use to start painting his tongue. Now a lot more work gets done on this tongue later on as I uh, jump from picking one colour to another. But uh, I thought that would be a good start and uh, it's basically a wash at this point just to see what would happen and the colour combination is great it just wasn't the greatest for that particular job. And uh, for the bone work on his hand, I think the bone, there's some form of claws or something, is Monfang Brown which is a reoccurring colour in this palette as I use that quite a lot for doing bone, it's a really good base. And I do understand, this is a very, very long video, guys, so uh, bear with me. There was a lot of paints used on this. After that, I'm going to use Dark Sea Green by Model Colour. I'm going to start painting the cloak in this fashion. It was, it, it was a bit of a pain trying to pick the right colour for this, as um, there were so many colours on the model already. I did find later on in the video, I'd really started painting myself into a corner and was struggling to find the right highlights as I was doing all the model at once. I should have possibly just focused on one bit and then moved around. Uh, one of our new Scale 75 metal paints. This is Decaying Metal, which looks really good and has a very fitting um, name for this particular model. It's like if you had baby poo, but it was metallic, uh, as me and Andy describe it. It's basically a metallic baby poo colour. I think Games Workshop has a colour that's pretty much baby poo. Um, but I really did like this one, and I will probably be using it on a lot more stuff. After that, I'm going to add a bit of old copper uh, to the decaying metal, and the old copper, again, is a scale 75. What was weird was... After adding the decaying metal to it, the decaying metal looked lighter in the pot, but it dries darker. So using it as a highlight, it sort of messed up a bit, so you really need to switch those around, uh, which is something I do later on. But we're just painting the very tops, or the top halves of those barrels, and then feathering it out with a, with a clean brush. Now I'm going to go to Panzer Dark Grey by Model Air, and I'm going to paint in basically the recesses there. No sorry, I think I'm just painting over the base. It has been a few weeks since I painted this and I haven't put the audio in. The reason for that is I've been working on the Warhammer Fest video which has taken weeks to finish. After I've done that I decided I would have a go at doing some freehand on it because I need to improve my freehand work. And this is Burnt Red by Monocolor. So I've gone for your traditional three circles of a Nurgle logo. It didn't come out the way I wanted it to, but I don't do freehand very often. Um, bit time consuming as well, but a skill I'd really like to learn just so I can master other styles of painting even better. Then what I've done there is I've put little studs in those three circles and I'm using Victorian Brass by Scale 75 to put little gold stud patterns on the circles. At this point I was just sort of making up this pattern and uh, trying to figure out something that would look decent. After that I'm going to use Incubi Darkness by Games Workshop. I'm going to use that to basically paint in the background for this and it's a very similar colour to the uh, rest of the model. It's also a way of me testing what this looks like against everything else as I'm going to paint something in those circles later on. What I then ended up doing was uh, putting down Monfang Brown to paint a skull in the top section there and this is the XV88 being painted over it. So basically, after highlighting so many skulls in the past, I should be able to re should really be able to paint one by now, just by knowing where the highlights go. So what I've done is start at the top of the head and uh, start doing the brow with the XV88. 
And uh, when it comes to this, you really need to keep your uh, brush very clean with minimal paint on it. Next, I'm going to use Dryad Bark, and this is to put some shade in, so I've got more um, more idea of where paints are going. So I start painting in the nose and the underneath, you know, the tops of the eye sockets, and then start blending those out just to start shaping that skull a little bit more. Um, it's quite hard to get this on camera uh, as it's forward facing. After that, I go back to the top of the skull, the brow, and adding in teeth, just using Xandri dust. Basically the same way I've highlighted every single skull ever, almost, but trying to paint it in a two-dimensional fashion. Uh, I think it came out okay. I should have spent more time on it or done it a bit larger so I had more control. After that, we're going back to a red leather by scale 75, and we're gonna start highlighting the red sections. Now what we're doing here is we're highlighting them with the curvature of the actual robe itself. We're not highlighting the tops of the circles. Um, maybe that's where I went wrong on that. Um, but again, I don't usually do much in the way of freehand, so I just thought I'd muck about, try and do something interesting with this, as it's predominantly on the front of him and is a quite, pronounced and eye-catching and I just couldn't pick a regular color to do it in next we're going to highlight those top sections again using blood red by scale 75 basically because I really like the scale 75 range and I've been using it quite a lot recently we're just hi highlighting in between those uh, studs that have been done as well I'm basically focusing most of the highlights at the top um, not of the design, but of where the cloak is. Now we're going to use Army Painter Red Tone. Just going to use that to uh, tone some of it down. Get in there, make sure there's no brush strokes. Yeah, I do apologize that you can't see this very well uh, while it's in the process, but at this point I also decided to put some of the arrows on there as well, just to fill in that blank space a little bit. Now it's Panzer Dark Grey mixed with Incubi Darkness because I was really struggling to come up with a paint scheme for this cloak. And we're basically going to follow all the highlighted areas and the folds for this now. Obviously we're using a glazing technique taking our time here as we don't want to have to apply too many washes to smooth things out. <coughs> Next is Panzer Dark Grey on its own. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, next is Panzer Dark Grey on its own. And you can see the effect of the glazing starting to build that up there and start adding the shape into the uh, into the cloak itself. You want to take your time with this as glazing is the best way to do cloaks and you want to capture that movement. Then we're going to add a little bit of dark sea green by model colour into that mix and that's Despite the name is actually lighter than the other colours, so the dark sea green is going to start lightening this up, making it a little bit more green. Um, I did like the combination as an end result, but uh, a lot of different layers went into it. Again, focusing on the top, but uh, with all the colours, you want to make sure that uh, you're blending from uh, the curvature at the top, I guess. As you can see, I've been following that there, and you can see that colour's really started to uh, highlight everything and bring in the shape. Next is Collier Green Shade by Games Workshop, no oil, and I'm using that to uh, tone down that colour. But I'm basically painting it into the recesses and painting it down the back of the cloak. You obviously don't want this to pull at this point, but it definitely enriches those colours and really makes that shape look more natural. You also want to try not to get it on the emblem that you've been painting. Next is Decay Black by Scale 75. I know we've just put a wash on, but Decay Black actually allows me to paint shade directly in rather than relying on a wash to dry the way I want it. So basically a wash consistency, but uh, yeah, Scale 75s are really good for glazing, so you can just paint your shadows in where you want them to be. So you can do your dark washers and then you can just add this in maybe add another wash over the top of it you can't go wrong yeah, dark sea green and panzer dark grey 
to go back up again on the uh, highlighted areas as we did put a wash down and we painted some shading in just to make sure these folds that lead to the, the hooks or well basically the hooks or clasps on his stomach to make sure they're really well highlighted although there is some more colours to come down on this as well now it's just it's the same mix but we've added even more sky we've added sky grey by model colour which is even more of a light colour compared to the dark sea green at this point we have a very interesting colour palette on that you see a very dark green with a muted sort of tone highlights where the light's been hitting it then we're going to use the same wash as we did before and just very gently start brushing that back down to uh, keep the shape there and keep all the highlights where they are but just make sure we've blended out any brush strokes or any marks that we may have left on there next i'm going to use dead flesh by game air because i decided to change one of the other skulls to an eyeball just because i didn't like the shape of that particular skull i want to cover that up so dead flesh by game air over a Monfang brown uh, base and we're basically going to paint that in but the thing is with the circle uh, it's, it's a bit of a pain because you want to generally go from the edge inwards but what happens is you end up with a big pool of paint there so you have to do it in a lot of layers and let that dry next i'm going to use caliban green to start marking off a like iris i believe well the the colored part of the eye i believe that's the iris anyway <clears throat> um we don't need to leave pla places for a pupil as we'll paint that in later on you want to be careful with this and i'm using this very small windsor newton brush here Next, I'm using an army painter red tone to go around the dead flesh. This is just to add a little bit of color to the dead flesh. Give it a bit more of a three-dimensional th three look, uh, even though it's on a uh, flat surface. So I'm trying to paint that round so uh, the edges of the bottom part just look a little bit more deeper red, giving, the, uh, giving it more of an orb shape than just being a flat round circle. After that, I'm going into the eye again with a Lauren Forest to start just bringing out those greens as the Caliban made a really nice base for that. Next, I'm going to add War Boss Green. And we're just focusing towards the top where the light would reflect, reflect back uh, off the top of it. So it looks like the... Uh, eyeball is catching the light ever so slightly obviously what I've also done here is uh, with the other color is I put them into little little stripes um, don't just color the whole thing in just stripes from where the pupil will be to the outside and then we're gonna put the pupil back in as you can see uh, just makes it look a bit more realistic and those tentacles were done in the same color as the eye um, just to fill in those gaps and make it look a bit more interesting So, it's time to start working on this lovely sculpted face that we've got. And what I decided to do was use Dryad Bark by Games Workshop as a whole coverage. But what I'm doing here is I'm painting it in between the lines of skin as well, as there's no clear line where this horn starts and the skin begins. What I wanted to do was make the colours almost match, so it blended in and looked like it was being pulled out of the face. After the dry yard bark, I start adding the black leather by scale 75. The reason for that is the skin tone has already been done in that. So if I paint the bottom half of this horn in that fashion, uh, with the dry yard bark underneath, there'll be a subtle transition of um, the bark appearing underneath it, but it will also look like it has had layers of the same coloured skin over the top of it. And that should help blend those tones together and make them look like there's no transition, it's one and the same. Then what I'll start doing is using Harvester Flesh by Scale 75. This is just to highlight those grooves as I didn't want them to be the grooves for the horn. I wanted them to be grooves of flesh as the horn protrudes out of his face. 
If you're gentle with Harvester Flesh, you can use it to highlight almost anything. Uh, it's one of those colors that are like the gray, Miskatonic gray, uh, are really good for highlighting anything. After that, I'm gonna start painting, following those lines that are on there, and bringing them up with uh, Zandri Dust. Um, starting the Zandri Dust at the mid-tone, um, being careful not to go over the lines that I've left at the bottom half. And we want this to be a pretty solid Zandri Dust by the time we get to the top. So there'll be lots of glazing required there, and it was at this point I realised there was still some errors on the horn that I hadn't sanded down, uh, which was quite frustrating. Now what I'm doing is mixing some Methonian Camo Shade with some Lamium Medium. As you can see that's very runny and easy to push around, and I'm going to use that as a uh, filter on these yellows as they look kind of pale to me so I needed to add a little bit more colour to them. Also it means I can put the Athonian Camo Shade over those rust blends that we've got as well, so uh, again it's going to be seamless decay and go. What I've done here is uh, pop, pop the horn for a piece of cling film to protect it and just to get a better blend uh, over the Zandri Dust I'm going to be using a Shabti Bone through the airbrush and just blending over the top of it. What I should have done was done it in the same fashion as I did the uh, Gorkonaut horns, but uh, I was trying to get all this done in just two weeks. Uh, it is a long video, but uh, I spent so much longer painting as it's all blending work. And what I'm going to do is go back to my Dryad Bark, and I'm going to start blending downwards from the top with my Windsor Newton Triple Zero, just joining those lines back up and making them follow the horn all the way around. This is going to add a, a nice bit of patterning and uh, really add some depth to it. I kind of like the result for that, I just wish uh, I'd noticed the casting error on the horn beforehand, as there's a bit of a bump on it. So I'm going to use Dark Earth by Model Air. And what I'm doing here is I believe I'm starting to pick out the warts, uh, which is something I wish I'd done earlier. Um, before doing some of the washes and things, it would have helped blend them together a bit better at the roots. And also, there is a lot of warts on this. Every time you think you're done and you've started the next colour, you find some more that you've missed. Next, I decided to go with Heavy Brown, the extra opaque. Um, the reason for that was I wanted a more solid colour on top of the dark earth, as the model air is easier to water down, so you can blend the flesh under the wart easier and then the heavier brown you can have a much stronger color on top and blend that in but you've got more workspace as you're further away from the other colors it's also extra opaque so it's going to give a nice cover in there after that I'm going to add a little bit of German yellow by model color into that heavy brown as you can see these warts are starting to become very three-dimensional but they took uh, best part of a couple of days I think to get right uh, they were very very time consuming basically glazed from all the underneath to the top and it's one of the only cases where having that little excess bit of paint on top that dries as a bit of a spot actually works uh, to your benefit now, I wasn't sure what I was doing with the intestines so at this point I decided to just blatantly just throw warpstone glow over them as a was going to add a whole bunch of bright greens to this um i wish i had now it would have broken up everything else very nicely uh give some more bright color to the palette uh, sorry about the uh, squeaky chair there uh, the idea was to follow that pattern with the warpstone glow from the barrel and basically have bits of green oozing out of it instead of the reds that i ended up going with and i think at the end i would have had a better result for doing it that way now this is a pure Agrax Earthshade wash because the uh, the gold metallics that I'd done or the gold result I ended up getting was not quite what I wanted. Originally I was going to go for a much more reddish gun but uh, again I was experimenting with a whole bunch of new colours that we'd bought and just mucking about. And those nurglings on top that you can see painted now are also done in the same fashion that I did the fat for the demon prints. I've obviously uh, glued the backpack on at this point, 
and done a black prime on those pipes and basically I'm going to start highlighting those with German Grey by Modelaire. I was going to do hazard stripes down them to match the base he ends up on but I thought it would be a bit too much. Plus with it being glued on that makes it really really difficult to do. Next for the goo inside the barrel I'm going to go for a straight Caliban green. There's going to be a lot of work being done now on this barrel as we sort of left it for quite some time. But you can pretty much cover, cover everything in that barrel in Caliban green and then paint over it including the Nurglings if you want to. Then I decided that the uh, barrel was a bit plain so I went for a black metal by Model Air Metallic and I watered this down quite considerably and then I just start putting it in in a bizarre patterns pretty much and then feathering it back out the reason for this is we're going to layer this up so much that it should look sporadic but um it should look like the rust is underneath these colors rather than the other way around so or the rust being on top um not quite sure which which way it looks but once you've done that you end up with something like this um which i was quite happy with then we're going to go to gunmetal by model air metallic and all those bits that are very metallic, we're going to start making sure we highlight the top sections of those. Obviously, I'm going to start with the top of the barrel there and work my way down. If you start at the top, work your way down, you're going to have much less paint on your brush by the time you get there and actually get a natural uh, shading effect as you go. Then what we're going to do after this is Steel by Model Air Metallic. And we're going to do the same thing again. As you can see, we're getting a lot of interesting colours, a lot of chips on this barrel. So it doesn't just look like a big rusted barrel. I'm also going to put model mates on and some other effects paints as well, hoping that these silvers will show through. Which I believe they do, uh, once the model mates has gone on. Which is an amazing rust effect. Now, now they're quite stark because of those extreme colours like the steel that we've put on. We're going to use Mournfang Brown as almost a wash. We're not going to do the whole thing like that. We're just going to dab it over the tops of the silvers as a very dirty rust wash. And what that's going to do is make that Mournfang look very orange in places where those brighter bits of metal are. But also it's going to blend them with the previous work we've done on, on the rust and make it look a bit more seamless. As you can see, I wasn't quite happy with the result of that, so I went for a uh, Agrax Earthshade. This one is watered down, and then I started bringing that to the bottom of the barrel, just to add the uh, three-dimensional and shaped effect, as that's the lowest part of the barrel. But uh, most of those metallic parts also get a wash with this, just to get rid of that shine, as uh, the steel is quite shiny, and I'd not toned it down yet. Next, the obvious colour to go to here would be a Warpstone Glow, as we want this goo to look quite potent and uh, toxic. Could have done this with an airbrush, but I decided to uh, just feather it in and do it by hand, just to show you guys that it can be done that way. Starting with uh, all the raised areas first, and just do this in several layers, just going at the top and then working your way down and then with the wet paint bring that back up again now I'm going to add a little bit of moot green into the uh, warp stone and we're basically going to do the same thing again as you can see that's quite vibrant there but you can always clean your brush off and then push the where the two edges meet you can push that around where you want before that dries once that's done, it's moot green, and this was taking me a lot of time, so I just decided to switch to the airbrush and be lazy. So this is straight moot green by uh, Games Workshop, which is a very vibrant green, obviously, and that's starting to actually give some nice colour transition against the, the muted flesh colours that we've got. I was going to go for a bluey sort of green to uh, make it look more like the actual chemicals from the creature itself, or the pus, but... Uh, Ended up just switching to the regular green glowing sort of goo, so we went for a scale 75 toxic waste green, which is again a very fitting name, um, and it's a very bright yellow, it's almost an illuminous one, 
and I'm just airbrushing that onto the uh, bubbles. It's the same way we would do the lava bases, um, if you've seen those on our eBay store. Uh, or you've seen the painting tutorial for those. So I was quite familiar with these techniques. Next is scale 75, undead flesh. As I wanted to do something a little bit different with the Nurglings and I wasn't quite sure what. Needed them to uh, be at least visual. Uh, vis <coughs> needed them to at least be visible uh, to whoever was looking at them at the time. So I just started hide highlighting them up with the undead flesh. Uh, which is sort of a greeny yellow colour. As you can see, they look more naturally nurgly green now. Now I'm using the Deep Red by Scale of 75, as they are sat in holes of him. In fact, no, I don't use this for the wounds, my mistake. I'm using this for the uh, mouth of this one, as it's got its uh, jaw all slack and its tongue sticking out. So there's uh, room to add a little bit more colour in there to really make him pop out a bit. After that, I'm going to switch to an Army Painter Green Tone. I want to start adding that extra green onto the nurglings at the top over the undead flesh. This is uh, being used as a filter rather than a wash. Uh, the skin's already quite yellow. This is just going to give a slightly different green tone to everything else that we've got going on. Uh, this is a long video, but as you can tell, it's starting to look rather repulsive. Next, I decided to airbrush Colia Green Shade by Games Workshop into the darker recesses of this Goo. Um, I'm basically wanting to add a little bit more blue and Colia green shade is a uh, green bluish wash. Obviously I've had two weeks to reflect on this paint job so I'm looking at it thinking ah, I could have done this better, I could have done that better. But uh, trying to explain that to you, why trying to explain how I did this, it's not that easy. And again, Tandalos Red by Scale 75 because for some reason it makes an excellent gall sort of tone for sores. I'm going to start working that around where the uh, fat Nurgling here is popping out the top of the demon print. And um, the paint just reacts so well to the brush. The Scale 75 stuff is brilliant. So you can make that nice and dark there and then add extra colours in later on. And uh, you'll see me just feathering this around all over the place. Right, time for some actual skulls that aren't painted onto him, and I'm pretty sure you can guess what's going to be used for these. I'm going to use the Mournfang Brown, but at this point you want to be really careful not to go around the edges. It's best to leave that little bit of green if you need to on the skull. So there's so there's no hard line where the skull starts and the um, goo begins, as there probably wouldn't be, as it'd be sloshing around in there. So you want to be careful that you don't just go over the green, although leaving green underneath is definitely a viable option. Now we're using XV88 to uh, highlight that brow and the teeth, as per usual, and the top of the nose. There's uh, three skulls in there, I think, in total, plus I did that other Nurgle in there in the same fashion, where they, uh, his face is completely eroded and he's just got a skull for a face. After that, Nice and quickly, we're going to go to Zandri Dust. And just start highlighting the uh, the main sections again there. The top of the brow, the flat of the head. And of course the light's coming from the direction of that gun arm. So those bits at the side there would be slightly brighter than the rest. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use a Reclam Flesh Shade. Very, be very careful with this. It's just to warm those skulls up a little bit more. Um, be careful you don't get this to drip onto any of the greens that you've done because it will definitely stand out. Very smooth, very minimal amount of wash on there. Just enough to enrich those colours, uh, give them a little bit more depth that they need as they're only small parts. Now I'm going back to the undead flesh and I'm going to use that as the highlight on these nurglings. I'm going to start bringing out his belly and the top of his head as well. And it should blend quite well, as uh, we just put washes over the top of this particular colour. I did leave some of the uh, rust in the underneath showing. One, it's a different colour contrast there, and secondly, it also makes his, his flab look sore. Now I'm using Dark Sea Green by Model Colour to highlight those pipes a little bit more. Like I said, the light would be coming from where the barrels are, shining on his face, and hitting this part here. 
and uh, all the skulls and the nurglings at the top as well. So I wanted to bring that up a little bit more, but I kept finding it very awkward to uh, glaze the way I want to because constant fear of chipping paint off the model as it's a forge world model and I'm having to handle it quite a lot. Now I'm going to use German grey, very watered down, and I'm going to use that as a wash as it's a darker paint. That's basically the base coat that it had a while back, and we're just going to tone that down um, so any sloppy highlights there should be washed down and uh, it should have a darker set of colours now in the recesses. So it's also going to help bring out those holes and there's a couple of bugs kicking around on this model as well that we're going to paint later on. After that, I believe this is a null oil wash because you can't go wrong with a null oil when painting blacks. Although it did go quite far away from black, all you have to do is keep adding null oil washes to that and it'll really tone those down. Just make sure they're thin, do them in lots of layers. Now we're going to add dark sea green into and German grey together for a brighter colour and we're going to start highlighting more carefully now uh, just the very top sections of these pipes. I find with a, a shape like this it's usually best to put a line down it and then feather it out and uh, clean it off with the rest of the brush rather than trying to glaze it into one particular area. I've also stuck the base on at this point um, basically just because I needed to get the base done in time as well so um, got that done and I was getting a bit tired of holding that um, cork stand it wasn't working very well this is just pure dark sea green on its own and we are now onto the very last page of paints okay so after doing that highlight we're going to use uh, one more null oil I'm not hitting the top but just painting around the sides there and well I'm hitting the top there my mistake but um, I'm brushing that all the way around and I'll probably take it off with my brush as well at the top just wet your brush, clean it, and then use that to pull all that wash off the top. It should give a nice smooth transition. Next is Herald Blue by Scale75, because on this barrel and a few other places, we have a lot of bugs kicking around. So almost all the bugs are done in this exact same colour, I believe, except the flies, which could have used quite a bit of work. I was getting fed up of rushing through this, trying to get it done within two weeks. As you can tell, it's been a lot of colours and a lot of shading. But all I'm doing there is doing an overbrush of those bugs as they do have uh, some lines in them uh, for depth that are defined. Now we're going to add some Hellbound Flesh by Scale 75. And again, try and stay in the middle, as in from both sides and back and forth as well. Uh, leap, try not to go into the gaps on them either because they look like a uh, little wood lice or something like that um, so try and overbrush the very center very carefully i'm using the windsor newton series seven uh, triple zero there for this sort of detail work after that this is a hell hellbound flesh or hellhound flesh by scale 75 on its own to paint those big maggots that are crawling through his brain and in his mouth at this point I was looking at it wishing I had have put more of those blues into things as a, they really added some colour that was missing as I used a lot of muted colours uh, which is what I tend to do when painting uh, Nurgle stuff. I don't like the cartoony sort of look myself. I wanted to uh, touch up that gun a little bit more so we're using Model Air Metallic Gold and Steel which is uh, like a 50-50 mix I think. And we're going to use that to start picking out the tops of those barrels. There's also some warts and things on the barrels and they'll get picked out later on in the same fashion as the rest of them. But yeah, that's very simple stuff. We're basically edge highlighting that uh, just to add that definition that was missing as they ended up a bit flat after that wash. You could use an overbrush if you want as there's a lot of texture to these as well. This is Model Air Metallic Grey Blue. And we're going to use those as a base colour for the uh, flies, as they look like <coughs> they look like the uh, blue flies we've got in England. So I thought that's what I'd do. Seem to fit in colour and a good base. 
then immediately going in with a null oil just to capture any of the depth in there as I didn't want to paint these too much as there's been so many paints around this area. They're also in a very awkward place uh, to paint. I just wanted to get these done and out of the way at this point as I was getting quite fed up of uh, staring at this model. And then I'm going to use Hellhound Flesh again. And I'm going to use that to highlight the maggots and I'm pretty sure that's what I end up using on the flies as well. Just using the Hellhound Flesh on those uh, maggots, on, not maggots, on those flies for the wings. Just to bring that extra bit of colour to them. Um, did try and leave some of the pattern for the wings so it looked like they had the veins or whatever going through them but it's such a small detail that it was really hard to get on camera. Now I'd almost completely missed the nipple because I couldn't decide what colour to do so I painted that in Resurrection Flesh which is actually quite a pinky flesh although it didn't show up very well on the camera. Um, basically did the uh, whole nipple um, in that colour as a base Keeping that simple there really. Then giving it a Reclam Flesh Shade Wash. No, oh, sorry, no. That was for the teeth, the Reclam Flesh Shade Wash. But yeah, uh, as you can see, I did change my mind about the face. Um, I was going to have that part that was sticking out as an extra eyeball. The eyeballs were done in the uh, filthy brown combination with a couple of extra yellows added to it. And the Reclam Flesh Shade here is going over all of it. But I decided to pick the gums out as well as the uh, I decided the teeth were pronounced enough but it, well, there wasn't enough gum so I decided to make the gum go up the face and have other parts of the face hanging over the model scale 75 bloodfest crimson and orkish dermis by scale 75 is then used for the tongue uh, I did tell you we were going to change the tongue later on and I did think this was a nice colour uh, especially when you put the warts back over the top of the tongue as well uh, I grab first shade, uh, really thin down, just to help blend the uh, details of these horns. I thought it was a bit pale still; it needed a bit more warmth to it and a little bit more colour. You obviously don't want that pooling at any point there, so I'm being very careful to wipe off as much of that as I can. Next is just green grey by Model Colour on its own, which. Uh, Previously we'd done a green grey mix with something else by model colour for the toes I decided to bring up those final highlights a little bit further and As you can tell the models almost finished at this point There's just a couple more colours left to go and then we throw some effects paints on off camera and it's pretty much finished at that point So the next colour is a Vallejo wash red shade And this is what I'm going to use to go around all the warts and that is time consuming as you don't want it pooling and leaving a hard line but um, this colour really did add that warmth that was missing and uh, stopped everything being so flat uh, there was a lot of soreness missing from it I was getting really distracted with this particular model there was something I really wanted to do um, with the way it looked but I wasn't sure how to achieve it so there was a lot of experimenting and those gums are then being highlighted in Dead Flesh by Game Air. Oh, sorry, no, that's the teeth. Just one more highlight there. As a off camera, I'm pretty sure we did the Reclam Flesh Shade wash at some point as well. So at this point, rushing through two weeks of video and trying to get it all on camera for you was a bit of a pain. So I do apologise if I missed any paints there. After that, we're using Hellhound and Ryland Grey by Scale 75. And uh, at this point, it's got a lot of uh, hellhound flesh in it as it's a lot brighter. I'm basically edge highlighting and picking out what's left of that cloak. The hooks that hold the cloak on were then done in a, I think, lead belcher or gun metal by Model Air Metallic and then washed with uh, Agraxes and Reclam flesh shades to make them look a bit more reddish. So there you have it. As you can see, guys, I did do some extra work off camera there. I added uh, some Caraberg Crimson around into some of those sore areas. I also went through a lot of the dark recesses just by using the Decay Black by Scale 75. 
I'm basically painting it into the recesses and then feathering it back out with the brush. Um, She's basically black lining by painting it in rather than a pin wash because with this particular type of model a pin wash won't work as well as it should as it'll start to clump up and put extra dark deep black recesses where you don't want them so um it does make that one a pain so you've got to do it manually or be more careful uh, which i wasn't when putting the uh, highlights and shades in but there you have it guys and this one took ages so don't forget to hit like and hit subscribe um i do hope you enjoyed this and you learned something from it if you watched it all the way through let's round this off with some big thank yous to all our patrons who help support this channel um you guys are great a big thank you to the Oak boys love minis ludwig hoffbauer warren danny wack kit lindquist Agnesive dawn and mark you are top you are our top playing patrons and you guys are awesome and if you want to join those, uh, Patreon links are in the description. Every donation helps. And if you want to get your hands on cheap models, go check out the Outpost. Brand new models, second hand price, including all other hobby kits and gears with 15 to 20% off. So that's all from me. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and share with your friends. And we'll catch you in the next one.